Kentucky. Cool and mostly cloudy this evening, dry overnight with lows of 5 to 9 degrees. And now you're up to date on News Talk. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. All right, you're welcome along. It's Thursday night on Off the Ball. Nathan with you until 10 o'clock. Hope you're all keeping well. We've got a really busy show ahead. Coming up on the football show after nine, two Republic of Ireland internationals. John Egan, the Sheffield United defender, is going to be part of the first Premier League game back against Aston Villa. He'll talk to us about Sheffield United's return to training and how he's been getting on over the last couple of months. We'll also talk to Amber Barrett, our Republic of Ireland striker, is playing over in the Women's Bundesliga in Germany with Cologne, which has been back underway for the last few weeks, so we'll get a sense of how things are going over there. After eight, we've got Paul McGinley on the line. He's going to talk about golf's return, uh, PGA Tour back this day next week. Still no confirmation as to what's going to happen with the Ryder Cup. We'll also talk about golf's attitude to racism and also about uh, Rory McIlroy's comments about Donald Trump recently. We'll have Owen Merchant, the Dublin footballer, the goal-scoring hero from last year's All-Ireland Final replay. He'll talk to us as well. And up in just a few minutes' time, John Giles is here. His latest all-time 11, this time looking at Scotland's all-time 11. And it is, once again, a pretty star-studded 11 that John Giles is going to be selecting. 53106 is the text number if you want to get in touch. Remember, the best place to listen in right now is on the brand spanking new OTB Sports app, which is available for download. It's very easy. Just go to sports if you're on the app store. It's number one. So you don't need to search too far to find it or you get in the Play Store as well. Richie McCormick is with us. How are you, Richie? How are you, Nathan? You well? I'm very well. Do you know what, Richie? It's, do, you know, do you know what the best thing about the app is? Go on. I'm on there loads. Are you? Are you always in on? Terms of, well, yes. Uh, in terms of like, you know, loads of stories being updated pretty much by the minute on the Off The Ball app uh, by myself. Most recently, the news that a certain German international is off to Chelsea. Oh, is that clickbait? Have, you, done, have you just done radio clickbait? What people will need to do, a Nathan, is download German the Off The Ball app. Yeah. Okay, so if they if they download the app, they'll find mm -hmm. out who this is mm -hmm. right away. Whereas otherwise, yeah. we may just end up shiting on for the next five minutes. Exactly. And they may have to wait. Yeah, it, but this, be, this pips the shiting on. Right. And you can get the so news directly to, to your app. face. Brilliant. Yeah. You're right. All the breaking news is there, Richie. I switch on all the time over the last 24 hours. You're doing a great job. And also, Richie, now you can just get Golf Weekly whenever the hell you want. You don't have well, to, you know, because yeah, sometimes yeah. they try and hide oh, us. Yeah. They try and hide us away. Yeah. Whereas now but, we're front and centre. Smack bang cannot be avoided. And who's made that decision? Listen, these things just happen. Just who's made that decision again? The people. The people. Just what people? The, the people. The people. The people. The pe people. People from Mayo. Go, go, go Golf Weekly is going to be up that. very shortly. We've uh, Chip Beck. Mm. Chip Beck. Oh, Chip Beck. One of those names from my youth. Yes, we were just commenting on that. Uh, every April, he would pop up around the time of the Masters and go, Chip Beck. Chip Beck. <laughs> one of the world's nicest men, it turns out. Has had a heck he of a He is, career. yeah. yeah. Second ever player to shoot 59. I think, I think, yeah, we had him on on one Sunday, I think, myself and Joe back in the day. And just the most remarkably lovely man. Very, very. Like uh, Guy uh, Garvey levels of lovely. That lovely. Is, is he genuine? Like, Guy Garvey, this is the lead singer yeah. in Elbow. He's having us all on, isn't he? Yeah. There's a deeper, darker side, surely. Of Guy Garvey. There isn't. I've met the man a couple of times and he's mm. just, he's like a big cuddly teddy bear who, you know, sporadically releases uh, indie anthems. But an, a nicer man you couldn't hope to meet. I'll take your word for it. If you say he's, he's nice, not he like, must be very nice. No, he's not, he's not like the fake Dave Grohl nice, which Oof. is like, you can't, you can't believe harsh. Dave Grohl. It's true though. Dave Grohl tries too hard to be nice or to be seen to be nice. Whereas there's just an innate loveliness that shines from Guy Garvey's very soul. Scotland's all-time 11, Richie. It's on the way. I bet he had a tough time picking a goalkeeper. <laughs> Why is that? The dolls, you know, basically, I grew up on St. Greavesy. And the perennial joke on St. Greavesy was, oh, Scottish goalkeepers, Saint, they're not that good, are they? Well, of all, the, of all the various lines you go through, it is, it is the weakest. Like, because I was just thinking earlier on when I, I saw a mention online of, of Josie picking the Scottish 11. And it got me thinking of, you know that side of the, the mid 80s to the late 80s that basically like if you have a side with a spine that is Hanson uh, or that should be anyway Hanson, Sunas, Daglish uh, aided by a fairly successful Aberdeen side a fairly successful um, Celtic side and 
numerous talented players dotted throughout the old first division in England. You would think that that side should have gone on and performed brilliantly, but through various mishaps and disagreements and people not performing in the international stage, uh, it just didn't happen for Scotland. But like you, you try and trawl through goalkeepers and you're struggling. Like It's just the most bizarre thing. You really, really are. Well, we often look at Ireland, uh, that Irish side of the 80s, and wonder what could have been. Right, there was the great success of Euro 88, but you look at the actual mm. talent of the players, and could we have had this incredible style of football and achieved far more? You talk about... Alan Hansen played 26 times for Scotland. That's just lunacy. Like, I know fitness-wise, he wasn't the May West, mm. but like for, for somebody of that... like He's one of the best centre-halves that the British Isles have ever produced. Like, and that he won 26 caps, even in a, an era when uh, caps weren't that easily won because you're playing fewer matches. Like, it's just, it's insane that he didn't win more. And um, the fact that they had like a forward line where you had Daglish and people, everybody able to spring off him from your Alan Brazils, Frank McAvenny's, Charlie Nicholas, Mo Johnson's, on and on and on, like genuinely really talented strikers. And yet still, it just never happens. It's just, it, it's so weird. Richie, I'm worried about you. You're cooped up in McCormick Towers day after day, yeah. Yeah. night after night. Yeah. Bringing out the hits, you know, breaking news. Who is this German striker? We still don't know. We still don't know. Well, now the people have uh, downloaded. No, 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 the no, view. no, no, Richie. Because I want to get you out of the house, Richie. I've got a big opportunity for you because uh-huh. OTB are teaming up with BMW and Triathlon Ireland to take part in the Run and Ride for Pieta. Both are fit and slightly unfit. That's your good self there, Richie. Team of OTB that's, presenters will be taking on the slander. running and cycling challenge over six weeks with regular updates throughout, culminating in a live broadcast of the duathlon on our sports breakfast show, OTB AM. We'll be getting nutrition, running and cycling experts on the show over the coming weeks to give us some tips. We'll have weekly prizes to give away courtesy of both BMW and Triathlon Ireland. And at the end of it all, we'll hope to have raised a lot of money for Pieta House as well. So, Richie, this is an opportunity. I I was initially suggesting this duathlon because obviously you can't, uh, for most people can't travel to somewhere where they can swim at the moment. And I thought a duathlon was just getting rid of the swimming. So it was a cycle and then a run. But it turns out it's a run, no. cycle, run. So I'm massively regretting that right now. Good Lord. At least, you, at least you know, you'd be shedding those unsightly pounds and inches, that old COVID stone that people are talking about that I'm seeing that you've uh, fully adapted to there Speak in your time yourself, off. So, Richie, you know. I've, I, I've, I've, ne- I've never been fitter. I've never been more fit and more unhealthy at the same time, <laughs> if that's possible. I, 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 to be honest with you, now in the past few months that I've had, that's most definitely possible. Go on, Richie. Give us the news then. If you've got the app, yeah. if you've got the app, you already know this. The brand new off, yeah, the brand new off the ball app There's broke this one uh, app, about right? half an hour. Yeah, the brand number one in the uh, sports list realize. on the uh, Apple's iTunes store. Uh, anyway, um, Chelsea looks set to win the race to sign Timo Werner from RB Leipzig. It's believed Chelsea have triggered the Germans' 60 million euro release clause with a five-year contract agreed. Werner had been a long-term target for Liverpool, who could still enter the bidding. Chelsea have already signed Hakim Ziyech from Ajax ahead of next season. Uh, suddenly, Chelsea looking like a pretty formidable side for next season. You mentioned Ziyech, uh, like the amount of young talent that is there. Pulisic didn't see a huge amount of, but has shown flashes since he arrived at the club. Obviously, they can play Mason Mount in an attacking position. I guess Willian, this probably spells the end for him. Yeah, I Chelsea, don't think it's. But... A, I don't think it's much of a surprise that Willian would be heading out the door. I think more often than not. Or more is the case than not, players and clubs have agreed deals and extensions for people that they want to keep on. We'll get to one of those in a moment uh, by this stage. Um, I think William is going to be one of those ones that's heading out the exit door. We've seen Chelsea have already triggered the uh, the one-year extension of Olivier Giroud. Mm. So they know what they're doing in terms of their forward line. But as you mentioned there, they're building a formidable squad. If, if you've got a forward line that has Timo Werner, Hakim Ziyech, uh, behind them you've got the likes of Mason Mount and N'Golo Kante and a fairly decent defence on top of that too. I mean, you could be talking about challengers next term. Yeah, because I think everyone expected that Werner was probably going to end up at Liverpool. That maybe Liverpool have looked at this. Still might, as, yeah. And they could respond, but can they, in the now new climate, spend 50, 60 million on a player who, well, where does he fit in if the other three stay? Mm. Well, that's the thing. Nobody's going anywhere, really. Uh, I'd, I'd imagine Werner's move will be one of the few, quote-unquote, mm. big ones this summer because nobody is willing to risk the cash. We saw Tottenham today uh, getting a £175 million loan from the Bank of England that all businesses of their kind of similar stature are entitled to go for. 
Um, and they're saying none of that is going on transfers. It's just going to be propping up the stability financial wise of the club. And you're going to find a lot of clubs are in a very similar situation to Spurs, whereby they just want to keep the the car between the ditches. They're, they're not even concentrating on going in this summer. And Chelsea could be the main beneficiaries of that. Uh, another step today on the route back to potential League of Ireland football. Yeah. More good news this. The second round of COVID-19 tests carried out at four SSE or Tristy Premier Division clubs produced zero positive results. Players and staff at Dundalk, Bohemians, Derry City and Shamrock Rovers are all being tested ahead of a four-team tournament. Further testing will take place on Monday when the club's return to collective training is allowed to begin. Shane Long, new contract. Not many goals. Yeah, but he was... Well, to be fair... Doing, his, doing yeah. his job is the main thing. He did. He scored three and eight before the season was called to a halt and that mm. helped Southampton climb up the table and Shane Long has agreed a new two-year extension with the Saints. The 36-year-old was coming to the end of his current deal. He was set to be a free agent in the summer but will now remain at St. Mary's until the summer of 2022. He joined Southampton back in 2014. He's made 24 appearances for Alf Hasenhutl's side this term and as I say, scoring three goals and those three goals coming in the gate games immediately before uh, all players were called ashore. Yeah, you'd very much expect when Stephen Kenny does manage eventually to get a squad together that the form that Shane Long scored in the few months before football broke up will have him mm-hmm. very much front and centre in his thoughts. Drew Brees, he's apologised. Yeah, he, he's attempted to apologise for his comments regarding player protests during the playing of the American anthem. New Orleans Saints teammate Malcolm Jenkins was among those to publicly scold Brees for his uh, call, for his recent uh, remarks. Brees now says the comments made to Yahoo Finance lacked awareness, compassion and empathy. 16-year-old tennis sensation Coco Goff claimed at a rally in Florida last night that it's sad she's protesting against the same thing her grandmother did 50-plus years ago. Goff channeled the words of Desmond Tutu telling the Delray Beach crowd, if you're choosing silence, you're choosing the side of the oppressor. Irish international athletes Gina Akpe-Moses and Joseph Ojewumi say education and communication are key in ridding this country of racism. Like Gene already said, the one where you're walking into a shop and automatically the security guard comes and starts following you around the shop. I just experienced that just last what last Saturday with some of my friends, and uh, one of them got really annoyed at it and started started like challenging the security guard, asking like why are you following us. They didn't have an answer, just kept doing it. Um, I, I love it. There's a lot of microaggressions that happens that I love. You know, Irish people don't see. Um, you know, like the the whole hair thing. They want to touch your hair. Um, they ask you, why do you like? Do you like watermelon? I mean, like just because, just because my color of skin looks like this is me. I'm going to automatically like everything that everybody else, everybody else is black. Like, you know what I mean, um, some like blatant ones is like, I when I play football a lot, like you know, you get really heated when you play football, and um, you annoy somebody, you tackle somebody the wrong way, and the first thing they'll come at you and say is they call you a black bastard call you the n-word really blatant into your face or even take it off the field have a regular argument with somebody the first thing they turn to is to comment about your race that's the first thing they turn to you have nothing else to come at you uh with and like that just shows hate and it shows a lot of disrespect and you know they know they know it hurts so that's why they'll, they'll use it you know yeah, really strong stuff there from Joseph Ajawumi and Gina Akby Moses as well. They were on OTB AM this morning with Jaron Owen. You can listen to that full conversation. It's up in the app or otbsports.com. We've obviously covered a lot of what's going on in America over the last few nights. Uh, Harry Edwards is up as well. Well worth listening to if you missed it. But from an Irish perspective, if you want to get an insight as to what it's like living here, uh, I would definitely check out that podcast from this morning. Mm, several musicians as well um, I have to mention Loa and Denise Chyla and uh, Mai have uh, been kind of outlining their experience as well in this country over the last uh, 36 hours and, and more and it's just really really enlightening stuff and the main thing is I think for guests, or I guess for people is to do at the moment is to listen of, uh, of those, to those experiences mm. uh, Before we wrap up Richie Six Nations again it seems that every week there's a, a new story around what may happen with the rugby yeah. calendar what's the latest on the Six Nations? <laughs> They could play Six Nations on a home and away basis next year, Nathan. It's one plan being explored by tournament organisers in the event that Southern Hemisphere sides can't travel this year. English RFU Chief Executive Bill Sweeney says all avenues are being explored. Uh, We heard recently that it could cost the RFU uh, upwards of €20 million should the Six Nations next season be cancelled. All right. Good stuff, Richie. 
Thanks a lot. Cheers, for that. Nathan. We'll talk to you again soon. Richie McCormick there uh, with the news round. So, the plan for the evening coming up in just a moment, we have John Giles' all time Scotland 11. After eight, we'll hear from Paul McGinley and from Dublin footballer Owen Merchant. And then on the football show, two Republic of Ireland internationals, Amber Barrett and John Egan. But John Giles is up next. Off the ball. Is available remotely, including home test drives and trade in valuations. Find out more at nissan.ie. Nissan Safety First. Harvey Norman is here to help with all stores now open for home appliances and essential technology. Upgrade to a brand new Sony 2020 TV and get an extra 10% off when you purchase online or in store from Harvey Norman. Like the Sony 55 inch 4K Android TV, now 1949. Or get the Sony 65 inch A8 OLED TV, now 3599. Shop online today at harveynorman.ie or safely in store at Harvey Norman, home of the big screen. Your live event may have been cancelled, but it can be saved. At Catapult, we can help reinvent your event. Online, we bring our 21 years of experiences as event producers together to offer fully managed, broadcast quality virtual events. From conferences to product launches, staff training to managed webinars, even live music events and virtual summer parties. Catapult events offer affordable options to any organisation. Contact us to find out more. Check out thisiscatapult.com. Caring for a loved one at home can be difficult, but rewarding. If you're caring for a child, an adult with a disability, or an older person, you are a family carer. Family Carers Ireland is here to help with your rights, care planning, counselling, crisis support, and more. Free phone our care line on 1-800-2407-24. Family Carers Ireland. No one should have to care alone. Please support our work and donate at familycarers.ie. Football on Off The Ball With the Paddy Power Golf Shootout It's golf, but not as you know it Watch on Paddy Power's YouTube channel tomorrow Gamble responsibly, gamblingcare.ie It is Thursday's Off The Ball And it's coming up to half past seven So it's time to talk to John Giles Evening John Evening Nathan Keep him well I'm, I'm, I'm still here Nathan <laughs> Good, good, good That's what we want to hear uh, So you've been picking your all-time 11s They've been going on a real treat over the last few months They've uh, helped the lockdown fly by for everybody And good. we've been going through some of the international teams over the last few weeks uh, Football's going to return soon So we're going to have to actually talk about some live football uh, Unfortunately Because I've been really enjoying these over the last few Thursday nights And tonight you're going to talk Scotland and Scotland, yeah Their all-time 11 And yeah. uh, the you would have gone up and played alongside so many incredible Scottish players down through the years. And I'd imagine, again, this was quite a tough choice, particularly when you look at some of the midfielders and the forwards that they had down through the years. It is, Nathan. You know, we'll try, well, well, I'll try to explain it as we go along because people will have different ideas mm. to me quite, quite, uh, quite normally. But, uh, uh, I mean, I, I just <laughs> I do the best I can. When you've got so many great players that you can pick from, uh, then it's, it's not easy. But yeah. anyway, we'll, we'll do our best, Nathan. So you've gone for a 3-4-3 formation. We'll start with the goalkeeper. We were just talking with Richie there that there used to be a lot of joking about the lack of quality of Scottish goalkeepers. Yeah. But you have a short list of Andy Gorm, David Harvey, Alan Ruff and Jim Layton. Yes. Who have you gone for? I've gone for David Harvey. Right. David, was, uh, David I played with him at Leeds. Yeah. Very, very solid goalkeeper, Nathan. Took over from Gary Sprague. Uh, who had been having a bad time. You know, I think when, when Don uh, was, was struggling uh, early on in his career, he put a lot of young lads in, and one of those included Gary Spike, who did very, very well for him. And uh, then he got to a stage, Gary was making a lot of mistakes, and I think Don was being loyal to him. I think he should have been out of the team before, I think. I think his nerves went on him, uh, Nathan. And funny enough, we were playing Birmingham uh, in the semi final of the Cup in 1972. And a big surprise was all Don left Gary's break out and brought Dave Harvey in. And uh, Gary never got back into the team again. Mm. So he was very solid, David. He wasn't spectacular. A lot of great goalkeepers in those days, Pat Jennings and, and uh, Shilton and these guys. He wouldn't, have been, he wouldn't have been in that bracket, but he, he was very, very good, very solid. 16 caps for Scotland. He played for Scotland in the 1974 World Cup. Very unfortunate, though, with Leeds. Picked up a bad injury, had an accident, and ended up should have been first choice for that lead side that reached the European Cup semi final yeah. in seventy five, and ended up missing out. Yes, uh, yeah, I, I was quite close with. Him. I used to room with him, uh, and uh, he was. He, I think he, he was out one night, and he 
crashed the blooming car on Nathan. And right. he, then he couldn't play for the uh, for the rest of the season. But he was uh, he was very 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 solid, very good, uh, very good goalkeeper. Did you like to have the one roommate over the course of the season, or did you rotate, or were there certain people you'd room room with quite a bit? Um, mostly Dave. I think when when you had a roommate, like Paul, say Norman Hunt, late Norman Hunt, who was in with uh, Terry Cooper and uh, uh, Billy Bremen, who was in on Clark. So yeah, we had to, we we got uh, settled in like that. Yeah. Nathan. Although all the lads, the lads and those, and these lads got on well together anyway, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And did did you like rooming with someone who'd be up chatting to you for half the night, or no? Did you want to be left alone? No, left alone and go <laughs> to sleep. Go to sleep early. I was, it was well, as you know, Nathan. In football, it's no good going having good nights of sleep Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and and then it comes to Friday and you don't sleep the night before the match, which is the most important one of the lot. Mm. Uh, I used to take a couple of sleeping tablets. Right. Uh, to make sure, Nathan, you know, because it was vital to get a good night's sleep before a match. But Dave, no, Dave didn't keep me awake at all. Yeah. Well, but on the sleeping tablets, would you have been someone who got nervous then ahead of big matches that, that you'd be worried that actually you wouldn't, you wouldn't get a good night's sleep? Well, that was it. You know, it didn't matter to me whether it was a big match. I used to take, it was, it was a regular habit Friday night or the night before the match, Nathan, because mm. that's when you need a good night's sleep. As I said, there's no good... Sleep if you got if you if you're playing on Saturday it's no good sleep Monday Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday and you don't sleep Friday night it's all gone to waste to be quite honest so it's just to make sure that you get a good night's yeah. sleep it wasn't nerves or anything you know I, I mean it was just uh, just to, just to make sure that you did get a sleep you know so David Harvey's your goalkeeper you've gone with three centre halves we'll talk about some of the full backs in a while and who may have gone if you'd gone with four at the yes. back but what you've done again is you've divided them into certain groups and you can talk about some of the players as we go along and, and who you've selected so yes. your first grouping of centre halves Ron Yates Alan Hansen Frank McClintock and Alec McLeish yes and I've gone for Alan Hansen uh, Hansen only won 26 caps for Scotland wasn't even included in the squad for the 86 World Cup no, no. I, I know there were various different reasons and there were injuries and there were some falling yeah. outs along the way. Like, like At that period, was Hansen comfortably the, the best centre-half in English football in, in, the, I, I in the 80s? It, yeah, I was surprised. I think there was a big fallout. I mm. think uh, Alex Ferguson had something to do with that, uh, with Kenny Dalglish at that particular time. I don't know what it was. There was a bit of a fallout anyway uh, at that time that he wasn't picked. But what, what you used to find a lot, Nathan, in those days... Lads who moved down to, uh, to England from Scotland uh, gave up a lot of chances to be picked. I mean, the great Dave Mackay got 22 caps. Yeah. Uh, a lot of, uh, Eddie Gray got 22 caps. I think Peter Lorimer got 20 odd caps. Uh, so it was, no, it was no coincidence. I think they, at that time, for a lot of the time anyway, you had a selection committee who always favoured the, the, the lads playing at left, left to play in Scotland. Hansen was in your all-time Liverpool team yeah. as well. Yeah, uh, I thought, yeah, I think it was great. I thought, I thought Hansen was a great player. Mm. And again, like uh, we talked about Beckenbauer and that uh, night, and he made it look easy. You know, he seemed to be strolling through a match because, again, when he was on the ball at the back, if somebody got too tight, if he had a good ch 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 change of pace, he didn't look like it, you know. But he was very calm on the ball, very because he, he obviously knew he had the space and could distribute it well. And obviously playing in a great team, his distribution didn't have to be great because you had Sunes and you know, Dalglish and all these players around him. But uh, no, he was a terrific player, Alan Hansen. That must just suck the confidence out of so many strikers as well when you're yeah. up against a centre half who is that calm, is unflappable, that like, you feel no matter what you do, no matter how many runs you make, that like, they're, they're not going to lose their composure, they're not going to switch off. No, and, and getting on the ball, I mean, a lot of defenders. Uh, like Big Jack said with that at Leeds, he was a great defender, but he wasn't he wasn't that easy on the ball. Whereas Hansen was, you know, Hansen could take it out no problem. He could be looking up and have and, and like all great players had plenty of time on the ball or, or seemed to have plenty of time on the ball. Now he was, he was top notcher and and, and 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 obviously a very very good defender. Mm. So Alan Hansen, I guess, an automatic selection in any Scotland team. Uh, your next grouping, Willie Miller, Billy McNeil, Gordon McQueen and Colin Hendry. Who have you gone for? Yeah, I've gone for Billy McNeil. Right, the uh, ultimate one-club man. Yeah, well, he was Mr. Mr. Celtic and, mm. and, and a good leader, uh, Nathan. You know, he, he, he was, a, it was a, a, an old-fashioned centre-half, you would say, today. Big lad, really good in the air, 
uh, OK on the ground, but didn't try to do anything uh, spectacular on the ground, knew his limitations and gave it to the players that could play, as they say, the managers used to say in those days. Uh, so very seldom made a mistake. Good-hearted lad, played for the team and really, really top-notch. You mentioned Hansen coming down there to play in England. A player of Billy McNeil's status and stature maybe never wanted to because, listen, they, they literally have a statue of him outside yeah. of Celtic Park. When you were playing in England, would you have been very much aware of, of his talents and a player who you thought could come down and play at the very highest level in English football as well? Oh, he could have done, uh, Nathan. But, but you get a lot of lads, especially in, in, in you know, Rangers Celtic, they love the club. And mm. I think he was one of those club lads actually loved the club. He was a long time there as a player and then went as, came as a manager. I think he two spelled as a manager. So they, they do fall in love uh, with the club and, and, and the fans fall in love with them. You know, he captained the team when they won the, 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 the European Cup and that. So he was very, very much attached uh, to the club. And you get, you get some players like that, that, that they're few and far between. And uh, oh, he would have been a hero yeah. uh, uh, with, with the Celtic fans for what he did for the club and over the years. In terms of the style of player he was, was he, was he a different style of player to Hansen? Was it more of a heart of the line, put your body, put your body on the line yeah. wherever possible? Yeah, he wouldn't have been as comfortable looking, or he wasn't, prop, he wasn't comfortable, uh, as comfortable on the ball as, as Hansen was. There, were, there weren't many uh, mm. as comfortable as him anyway. But, but he, was, he was the old-fashioned centre-half, uh, really good in the air, won tackles, blocked shots, did all the things that you would expect big centre halves to do, and he did them. And he, he was, a, he was a, he was, I think he was a big leader in that particular team. Yeah, yeah. All right. So Billy McNeil again, uh, just the twenty nine caps for Billy McNeil, albeit at a time when they were probably harder to earn. Uh, your final centre half then for the back three. Your shortlist is Kenny Burns, Martin Buchan, Richard Goff, and Matt Elliott. Yeah, I've gone for Richard Goff. Right. I thought he was a good all-round player, uh, uh, Nathan. He was down. He was. Down, he was only, he was only he one year at Spurs, mm. and then went back to Rangers. But he was a he was a demanding type of player. He was quite mobile, uh, covered the ground well, used the ball well. Uh, again, you know, especially a good a good centre half or good player at the back. Really good blocker of shots. Uh, good getting good tackles in, but was comfortable enough on the ball to take it out. Mm. Uh, uh, like Billy McNeil, a big, big leader as well of his club, captain Rangers to their nine in a row. You know that one year he was at Spurs, brought them to an FA Cup final. Yeah, played in two World Cups with Scotland as well. Like when you're throughout this run of picking all-time 11s, when you're thinking of your centre halves and the common traits that they generally had, like did you want a a centre half who was very vocal, who was very loud, who who was always you felt fully in command of the rest of the back four? Yeah, well, well, what what happened with Billy McNeil and these guys? You said in those days they, there wasn't as much playing out from the back. Mm. You know, you usually had a big centre forward, and you were getting up the centre forward. So they had to the centre halves in in those days had to win an awful lot of ball in the air, and these particular players could do that. Especially Billy McNeil. Uh, Alan Hansen wasn't great; he was okay in the air, but he wasn't regarded as the big centre half. You know, whereas Billy McNeil and uh, and and the other lads, the big centre halves, come and win it and get the tackles in. Mm. You know, really defending. You know, a lot of it now, as you see, they're playing out from the back, Nathan, a lot. And you have to be like a midfield player now and to be a defender nowadays, uh, which I think it's overdone. Uh, I think the main thing is defending and, and be good enough to give it to players who were in the middle of the field who could do it on the ball. But that's, that's the way times have changed. But these guys playing in those days, Billy McNeil uh, and uh, Alan Ruffle, were, were, were that type of player. Mm. Win, win it. Win it. You've gone with three centre halves then, so you haven't picked any full backs, but there have been plenty of good Scottish full backs as well. If, if you were to look through them and know your shortlist, say for right back, Danny McGrain, Steve Nicholl, George Burley, Sandy Jardine. Like, Nicholl is obviously the most recent of those. Was, was he the best Scottish right back of recent times? I think so. I think so, uh, Nathan. He was very mobile, he could play in midfield, and he played in the great Liverpool teams. Uh, he wouldn't have got much publicity because of mm. all the great players around him, but he always did a good job. Very, very solid. Uh, and was a better player than he looked, in my opinion, Nathan. Now he's, I, think, I thought he was a top-class lad. The left-backs then, who could have gone for? Arthur Alberston, Eddie McGreedy, uh, Willie Donaghy, Frankie Gray, Tommy Gemmell, and Andy Robertson, probably the, the great current Scottish player. Yeah, I've got, I haven't been recently gone for the current players. Mm. 
But I think Andy Robertson is so outstanding uh, that I think he'll last for a long time, Nathan, and I've gone for him. Right. I think he's really, really outstanding. And, and they're, they're very good players, excellent players that you mentioned. Yeah, but this lad has done it for the last two or three years. And I think he will go on uh, uh, to be one of the greats. Yeah, you think that like this, it's hard to imagine it's a blip considering he's been to two Champions League finals, he's on the verge of winning a, a Premier League title, but I know often the comparisons with himself and Alexander-Arnold, I think you've touched on it before, his defensive ability, is that what brings him to a slightly different level maybe to Alexander-Arnold? Yeah, well, well, well when, I, when, I, when I look at full-backs even in a modern game, I'm looking, how are they, how are they defending, Nathan? Mm. And uh, going forward is, is, is a bonus. Uh, and this lad, he, you know, he's, he's defended extremely well, but has made a lot of goals from that position. You know, I think Alexander is better, better distribute the ball, better going forward than him. But there wouldn't be that much between them, even in the, the uh, laying on of goals. Yeah. But I think he's just outstanding. His attitude is great. He's every match he's up for it. And I think he will go on. I don't think he's going to, it's going to sit back in any way whatsoever. I think he'll finish up to be one of the greats. Yeah, it does seem to have a brilliant attitude, all right, Andy yeah. Robertson. I'm going to take a very quick break, John, because we want to give a bit of time to the midfielders and the attacking players that you selected because there's a heck of an amount of talent in there. We're picking John Giles, all-time Scotland eleven. right back after this. Football on Off The Ball with Paddy Power. Don't miss Paddy's Golf Shootout. Watch tomorrow from noon on Paddy Power's YouTube channel. Gamble responsibly. Gamblingcare.ie Future of Work with Jess Kelly and Gavin McLaughlin. On the latest Future of Work, we focus on people. We'll hear how to keep your staff motivated during a pandemic. And the opportunities that exist for rebuilding a company culture. Future of Work with Jess Kelly and Gavin McLaughlin. Thanks to Vodafone Business. Listen and subscribe to the podcast now or tune in Saturday at 7. On News Talk. Home. Suwale. We're at home a lot these days, but we can still explore with the TG Cahar player. Explore the home of Irish content. Home to award-winning documentaries, home to critically acclaimed series, home to culture, trad music and sport. Explore Ireland from the comfort of your home. Explore the TG Cahar player app. Now available to download for free. Gachoid. Worldwide. TG Cahar. Sona Suala. Before you do this, and this, maybe you should do this. Hi, I'd like to book a service, please. Stay safe and look after your car by checking in for that overdue service or repair at your local SIMI member garage. All members follow HSE safety guidelines. And if you need a new or used car, then your local SIMI garage can help too. Visit SIMI.ie to find a member. Brought to you by the Society of the Irish Motor Industry. Some of us are staying home alone and feeling very lonely. Connecting with friends and family can help. For advice on minding your mental health and information on supports and services, go to gov.ie slash together, an initiative of the Government of Ireland. Harvey Norman is here to help. Our spacious stores are open for computers and electrical products, with our team practising social distancing to keep us all safe. So if you need technology to stay connected, or to replace a faulty home appliance, or even a new TV to stay entertained, then we're here to help. You can shop for home appliances and technology safely in store, or shop our full range online, with click and collect and home delivery available. At Harvey Norman, we're here to help. On June 8th, horse racing will return behind closed doors. And while we're excited to get back to what we love, the safety of everyone involved is our priority. So we'll be following government guidelines, restricting attendance to essential people, implementing social distancing, and using the latest health screening procedures. Around the race course, surfaces will be disinfected, hand sanitizing stations will be set up, and signage will be there to ensure hygiene standards. For more on how we're keeping racing safe, visit hri.ie. During dark times, my locum and shed turned the light back on with a place to go and people to chat. Please help the sheds to reopen post COVID 19. Text sheds to 50300 to donate 4 euro or visit mensheds.ie. IMSA will receive 3,60 euro per text. Service provider lightcharity.com.
Football on Off The Ball. With the Paddy Power Golf Shootout. It's golf, but not as you know it. Watch on Paddy Power's YouTube channel tomorrow. Gamble responsibly. Gamblingcare.ie So we're in the process of selecting John Giles' all-time Scotland 11. This is the 11th John Giles all-time 11 that we've been selecting over the past couple of months. You can get them all right now on the OTB Sports app. We've gone from Liverpool to Manchester United, Spurs, Arsenal, Chelsea, Leeds, the Republic of Ireland, a quite incredible rest of the world 11, England, Wales, and now we are on to Scotland. And so far as we look through the team, it's a 3-4-3 formation. The goalkeeper, David Harvey, and a back three of Alan Hansen, Billy McNeil, and Richard Goff. Let's get on to the midfield then, John. And again, we have some little groupings here and you're going to select one from them. First up, we have Jim Baxter, Bobby Murdoch, Paul Max Day, Billy Bremner, and Paddy Querrand. Yeah. Uh, I've gone for Billy, Billy Bremner. How important was his Scottishness to Billy Bremner? I know he captained them at the 74 World Cup, over 50 mm. caps. Well, that Scottish heritage, was it, was it something he spoke about often? Billy, yeah. <laughs> Billy spoke, spoke about it a lot, often. Uh, Especially playing for Scotland, mm. I was very proud. He was very proud of it, uh, as most of the Scottish lads were in my in my time. Uh, Eddie Gray, Peter Lorimer, and these lads, and we had a few of them: Gordon, Gordon McQueen, and Joe Jordan. All all loved playing for Scotland. But Billy was, uh, yeah, he was he was a real he was a real Scot. He was a real Scot. He he enjoyed he enjoyed it. Uh, mm. Right. You've spoken about him often down through the years, and your partnership in the middle of midfield for Leeds and, and just how great a player he was. When when you were in the midst of it, when you are in the thick of that time together at Leeds, were you aware of, of just how, were you always aware of just how good he was? Oh yeah. Well, Billy was an outstanding player and Billy had, he's probably, he's certainly one of the most confident players I ever, ever met in my life, mm. Nathan. Even before a match, you know, uh, you'd be quiet, well I would, and most of us would be quiet, Billy would be hopping around. Billy expected to be a star of every Every game, Nathan. And a lot of the times, he, a lot of the games, he, he was. Yeah. But that was his attitude. You know, he, he, I, I never saw him nervous. Always bouncing around. It, it bloody nuisance in the dressing room sometimes, you know. Uh, because sometimes, well, I was quiet. And Norman Hunter, a few of the lads would be quiet. He'd be hopping around. I don't know, I don't know where he got the energy from. And he's saying when he trained. Like, Billy, Billy wasn't a good trainer. The horse country's run. And him and Big Jack were always last. And he wasn't really true. But, but put a ball out. And he'd come to life, like he'd stay mm. there all day playing and staying on the pitch. You know, Billy expected and was a star in, 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 in every game that he played. Unbelievable confidence. How did he deal with the games when he wasn't the star, when things didn't go right for him? Um, I never remember him reacting when it didn't go right for him. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I never, never ever heard him say, it "Wasn't my day today." Right. <laughs> no, he, he was, he was, uh, he, he'd, he'd unbelievable confidence in himself. Yeah, Nathan, and I'm plenty to say on the pitch uh, to the opposition on that. As you say, there pre-match at times, yourself and himself probably very different personalities. Oh yeah, totally Did, different. Would you, would you have rubbed each other up the wrong way from time to time? Would you have clashed often? No, no, not really. No, no, we did, we didn't. We didn't clash on the pitch mm. at all. Uh, like Billy was, um, uh, what would I say? He, he'd, especially when the goal down, Billy'd want to get up around the edge of the box, and I'd be, I'd be sort of more calm. Look, Billy, hang on, just keep playing, just keep playing. And because, the, 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 like the goals he scored, the dramatic goals he scored were incredible, uh, Nathan. Mm. Semi-finals, finals. You know, I, I won't give you a list of them, but uh, I, I think three of the semi-finals we got to Wembley scored the winning goals. You know, and and uh, he was and good goals, important goals. You know, yeah. Uh, like he get, uh, uh, he was he was goal scoring midfield and, and and plenty of energy. His energy was unbelievable, bouncing around. In, like in those days, he didn't hold, have to hold the midfield. Mm. Billy Brown was out the midfield players. Well, I was lucky enough to score 115 goals. He scored 115 goals from midfield. Now a lot of mine were penalties, but he was he his was just dramatic goals and important goals, uh, Nathan. In a way, you were probably lucky to find each other at the same club at the same time because everything you've ever said about the way you played together, you complemented each other so well. 
whether it is personality, whether it was skill wise, that you both knew your role for the team. It was quite a similar role at times, and there was never there was no real ego involved with either of you. No, no, we, no. We just had to get on. Well, when you're, you're when you're playing together in the middle of the field like we did, you react to each other, Nathan. Mm. You know. Like, I knew what Billy was going to do before. He knew what I was going to do. That's how you get a combination in, uh, going in, in the middle of the field. Uh, but, but, but he could win the ball as well. He would, there, was, there was no hanging around with him. Like, he was, he was just a bundle, bundle of energy, uh, yeah. uh, Nathan. So, Billy Bremner, uh, an automatic selection in midfield. Let's move on. The next shortlist, John White, Bobby Hope, John Craig, Graeme Souness and George Graham. Yeah, I've gone for Graeme Souness. Mm. This is already shaping up to be the toughest midfield of any of the 11s <laughs> you've picked so far. Yeah. Well, these are all Scottish lads, uh, <laughs> born and bred in, yeah, born yeah. And bred in Scotland, and, and Scotland with great tradition, as we know, for bring, breeding players anyway. But Graham, I think, really found his way at, uh, at Liverpool. Mm. I, I know he was at Spurs. He didn't, he, well, he, he, I think he got impatient there and went to Middlesbrough, which was a good grounding for, grounding for him. But when he went to Liverpool, I think they were made for each other. Graham commanded the middle of the field. He had plenty of confidence in himself. Uh, different to, to Billy Bremner, he wasn't quite as good at beating players around it. He wasn't particularly quick, uh, Graham, but a great presence, great distributor of the ball. Uh, and, 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 and whether the game was tough or easy, he wanted the ball. You know, mm. you've often heard of the, the Sunshine Boys, uh, uh, Nathan, the fellas who are winning, you're winning five, they're winning five nil, and give me the ball, they can't get enough of it. You know, if they're losing one nil at home, you don't see them. Graham wasn't a sunshine boy. He was anything but. He would take responsibility. He had plenty to say on the pitch. Uh, could dish it out, Nathan, mm. as well. Um, mm. And uh, what a top-class player. Uh, the sunshine boys that you talk about, like all the great teams, didn't have too many of them. And they all had a Graham Souness style yeah. figure that... When yeah. and it's always going to get tough at some stage in sport and in football. Someone you can rely on. Everything you ever say about about Souness that, like that Liverpool team, in hindsight you'd almost look back and you'd feel they won every game quite convincingly. What well, wasn't the case? There was no. tough, tough games, and Souness yeah. was there front and center every single time. Definitely. I mean, the Sunshine Boys they go missing, Nathan. You know, Liverpool, uh, Liverpool, like all the great teams, don't carry a Sunshine Boy. Mm. You know, if you look at all the winning teams, it doesn't matter who they are. And to Liverpool this year, uh, you, you could see somebody messing around Liverpool here, and you see Klopp, you take his head off, <laughs> you know. And and Don Reeves says all the top managers they just wouldn't be in the club for two minutes if they were a sunshine boy. Get them out, get them out of the club, and and Graham brought that uh, determination uh, and control with him into the uh, what was a successful Liverpool team anyway. So I know Graham was top notch, top notch. You would have played against them. I don't know if you played yeah. when he was with Middlesbrough. Like, yes. Could you see the signs there that this was going to go? This player was going to go on and become one of the great midfielders of his time. Oh yeah, he was on his way. He was only starting off. I actually, I had a couple of clashes with him. I, I played against him at Leeds, uh, uh, Nathan, and he was down the back of my legs. And, and you know, and, and, and when you get that, you don't say anything. But I, 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 I was in a tackle an incident with him at uh, Middlesbrough. Yeah. And I, I copped him. Uh, and I'm not bragging about it, but I copped him on it. And he went crackers with me. <laughs> he went crackers. He went crackers. He said, I'll break, your, I'll break your effing leg. And I said, well, we'll see you about that, Graham, you know. <laughs> so, but we were good pals after that. Now, Graham could dish it out. Yeah. I, oh, he I, could I, dish I it out. No, no doubt about that. And, and he could take, he had to take it as well, you know. Uh, no, knowing that he could dish it out and uh, knowing that you could dish it out from time to time, was any part of you worried uh, in the years that followed when you come up against him again that I, I, he'd be I eyeing I, up revenge? I don't think I, I only want to come up against him in uh, a, a League of Ireland match, actually. I was okay. playing for the League of Ireland against Liverpool in a friendly match at Daily Mount. And uh, actually, it was, was one of the lads who played in midfield with me. I, I, um, I can't think of his name now. But he copped uh, uh, Graham. And Graham thought it was me. <laughs> and he said, that's the second time you've caught me. I'm, I'm going to do you in. Graves, he was raging, you know, coming on. Well, it's nothing to do with me. <laughs> but that's the way it was. Yeah. And when, he, when, when, he, no, was, when he, he, ended up, he ended up working together years later on the television. Yeah. Did, did, yeah well, did, once the matches, funny enough, now, Tim, all that happened on the pitch. Yeah. And some of it was pretty bad stuff. But once, once the match was over, that was the end of it. Yeah. I never, I never held like a, a personal thing. I nobody held a personal thing against me. It was all part of the game. You give it, you take it. You know. Mm. 
let's move on because uh, we don't want to run out of time here. Okay. Your next selection then, you have a short list of Archie Gemmel, he of the Wonder Goal, Bertie All, Dave Mackay, Gordon Strachan, Don Masson. Yeah, I've gone for Dave Mackay. Yeah. The great Dave Mackay. One of the great all-rounders. Could have, yes. Could have picked yeah, him in yeah. a few he different was, positions he was, one of, he was one of the greats. And I don't mention I don't mention great very lightly. Actually, I made my debut against him, uh, uh, Nathan. He was playing for Spurs. And Spurs. He'd just come down from Scotland. And they were going on to the great years. They didn't, that was in 1959. They didn't mm. win it in 59, but they went on in 19... Uh, uh, 60 and 61 to win the double and all the trophies they won but he was the driving force in that team and they, they used to say with Danny Blanchflower like Danny was the artist and Dave was the was the, the, the killer like but, but Dave had as much ability as Danny Blanchflower did mm. he could score goals he could he was all over like if you if you were playing on the right wing you held the ball long enough Dave McKay would be tackling you mm. if you were on the left wing he held, he'd be tackling him as well a bundle of energy but could really play and drive the players on, Nathan. Yeah, he was a, he was a real player, you know. So your last selection then from midfield, the shortlist, John Collins, Asa Hartford, Gary McAllister, Bobby Collins, Paul Lambert. Uh, I've gone, who have I gone for I there? Gone, you were saying oh, Bobby, Bobby Collins. Collins. Oh, sorry, Bobby Collins. Mm. How could I forget Bobby Collins? Bobby Collins was great. Uh, Bobby Collins was a great player for Celtic. He came down to Everton for a season, then came to Leeds. Bobby Collins was 75% responsible, I think, for the success and the future of the Leeds team. That's how good he was. An old pro, uh, and you can't beat an old pro with that attitude, that attitude. This is with Norman Hunter, Paul Madeley, Paul Reaney, Teddy Cooper, Eddie Gerg, Jungfl is coming on. This was a guy to, to, to train and do what's needed to be done. Mm to become a pro, to become a player. And Bobby, Bobby Collins was responsible in many, way, in many ways, in a great way, for the, 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 the eventual success of the Leeds team. Mm. When eventually you succeeded him in the middle of midfield alongside well, he was a great, he was great. Yeah, he was great for me, Nathan. I, I went to Leeds when I was 22, uh, and uh, uh, there was, um, I played to the, the right-hand side mostly. You know, Bobby was in the middle, and that was my natural position. So, but when I left Manchester United, I was only 22, and the previous season, I won't don't go too much on it. I had a bad time in the semi-final of the cup, but Matt lost confidence in me. I was trying to do what Bobby Collins could do when I was too young. So when I went to Leeds, I had two years as an apprentice, I would say, to Bobby Collins. Bobby got injured, and I took over from him. Uh, but I needed that couple of years to be able to do what needed to be done. Mm. Uh, but Bobby Collins was a great example to all the young players and to Leeds United. Let's get on to the front three because we don't have a lot of okay. time. So your first shortlist, Mo Johnson, George Orden, Jimmy Johnson, Dennis Law, Peter Larmer, Frank McIverney, Steve Archibald. Yeah. Who have you um, gone for? I have gone for... Where am I, Nathan? I'm on the, the forwards. You have, you have a choice between Jimmy Johnson and Dennis Law, I guess, essentially. Well, I've gone for Dennis Law. Okay. I've gone right. for Dennis Law. Dennis, Dennis, again, I think was one of the greats, mm. uh, Nathan. You would have he played was, with him, did you, at United? I played with him, yeah, I played with him for a season when he first came to United. And he's the most dynamic player I ever played with. One of the most dynamic players I've ever seen, but mo certainly the most dynamic player I've ever played with. Ball's flying across the box. And you think nobody's going to get him, Dennis would get him. Mm. Aggressive, uh, good in the air, especially for coming from right to left side of the pitch. Uh, was a great dribbler. It'd be totally different to Jimmy Greaves, for example, who was a dribbler and, and go past people. But Dennis was the one that would uh, contribute more in winning the ball back. Uh, and anywhere there was a chance of getting it, he'd be in, he'd be quick, he'd be aggressive, and he'd get the ball so that other people couldn't get to it, in my opinion, Nathan. Scored a lot of goals for Manchester United. Yeah, 237 goals, only yeah. behind Rooney and Bobby Charlton in the all-time yes. list. Yeah, one of the greats. Only, one of the greats, only Scottish think, player to have won European Footballer of the Year as well, which he did in 1964. Yeah, he won, he, was, it. He, won, he won it in 1964. Yeah, oh, yeah, he was, year, so he was. Yeah, he got an injury, Nathan, before mm -hmm. the, the European Cup final in 68. And to be honest, he was never the same again. Dennis needed this uh, physical attributes that he had, the quickness and that. And he got this bad knee injury. He didn't play in the European Cup final in 68. And I don't think he quite got it back again, Yeah, Nathan. But when he was fit and well, uh, he was brilliant. So, Dennis Law then, ahead of 
Jinky Johnson there, was that a... Like, did you did you see much of him? Did you see much of that Celtic side that won the European Cup in 67? Did I see much of them? Yeah. I saw too much of them. <laughs> 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 they beat us in the semi-final. Yeah. Hammered us at that. And Jimmy Johnson was was uh, was brilliant. Absolute genius. Uh, and I, I put him in, in that list there because I, I really... Uh, I, I've, I've got another list where John Rob, Robertson mm. uh, is leading it. And I know a lot of people say, why not Jimmy Johnson? Well, I put John Robertson in instead because I think John Robertson, uh, Jimmy Johnson was unique in his way and what he did at Celtic had beaten players and that. Uh, but John Robertson was unique in a different way and I think even more influential than Jimmy Johnston. He played for the not far as people who remember him, mm. like look a small dumpy lad playing on the left wing. He's the only left winger or winger I've ever seen that could control the game from a left wing position, Nathan. His positional sense was incredible. Yeah. Because and he was the he, he, like when he got up on the, the when he had to attack the back he could do it. But he initiated the attacks. Like the like the John McGovern in for John McGovern was a very ordinary player, but all he had to do was get it out to John Robertson, and he'd do the rest from there. Usually, you have to do it from the middle of the field. So, like, how did he do it? Um, because his positional sense was so good mm. that he couldn't give, he couldn't mark him. The width, like uh, he, again, like great players, he gave the fullback two choices: a bad one and a terrible one. Hmm. In other words, he used to come so deep that if the centre, the right back, got too close to him, he'd get the ball behind him. So we had to give him like 10, 12 yards to stop him getting behind him. So he'd get it to his feet and he'd do it from there. He'd pick a pass out like a midfield player could, could do. And when he had a chance to go up, you remember him with Trevor Francis in the European Cup, he could be the player as well when he got up there. Like he was a double player in, in many ways. He could, he could do his to defend him. But, but initiating attacks from the, the left wing position, is very, he's the only one I've ever seen doing it, Nathan. Either from the right wing or the left wing. He was he was incredible. Could he have played that's in the why I put him in in front of Jimmy Johnston, mm. could, basically. Could, could John Robertson then have just been a centre midfielder? Probably not. Right. He, he might not have had the, the engine or, or the or the the positional sense to do it from that particular position, Nathan. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like once he got on the wing, he had the space. See, there's one great thing about you, if you play properly on the wing, Nathan. Nobody gets behind you. Because if you're, you, what, what the wingers generally do, or should do, is have their back to the touchline, right? Yeah, yeah. So you, now, now if the ball's, you, you can see across the pitch if you're in the right position, which he was all the time, right? So when the ball's coming out to you, certainly nobody coming from behind you, right? So you had more room if you, if you were doing it in the right way, which he did. And he was quick enough, and, and if somebody did get too close, to go by him. And he went past him in the vital areas around the edge of the box to get the crosses in to make goals and score goals. And he's the only one I've seen do it. So Jimmy Johnson was great as well, doing what he did for Celtic, which was to be players at the, at the end line. Uh, but but uh, like if Jimmy Johnson was playing in the Notts Forest team, I don't think he would have been as influential right. as he was with the Celtic team. Yeah, yeah. So I know that's a little bit complicated, but I think the job... Actually, I think the job that John Robertson did for for Notts Forest winning the European Cup twice in the league and that mm. was was an even more important, or I would say, a bigger job than Jimmy Johnson did for Celtic. Yeah, and Jimmy Johnson was great as well. And John Robertson set up the goal for Trevor Francis in '79 and scored the goal that won it for Forest in '80. Yeah. He was on the shortlist with Davy Cooper, Lou McCary, Willie Henderson, Eddie Gray, Willie Johnson, and Bobby Lennox. We're pretty much out of time. Okay. We need your final selection. I think it's going to be a straightforward one. Your shortlist was Ian St. John, Ali McCoy, Kenny Dalglish, Alan Gilzean, Graham Sharp, and Andy Gray. Yeah, Kenny Dalglish. I think I've spoken about him so mm. much before. One of the greats. I know we're out of, running out of time. One of the greats. Couldn't speak too hardly about him and uh, uh, just a fantastic player. All right, John, great stuff. It's a heck of a Scotland team from down through the years. Dave Harvey in goals, back three of Hanson, McNeil and Goff in midfield. It's Bremner, Sunes, Mackay and Collins and a front three of Law, Douglas and Robertson. Great stuff, John. We'll talk Thanks, to you next Nathan. week. Thank you. All right, quick break. Back after eight with Paul McGinley and Owen Merchant. News Talk Extra. Our email newsletter straight to your inbox. Sign up now at newstalk.com slash extra. Whatever else changes, looking after baby is still top of every parent's list. With everyday savers from Dunn Stores, we've got cooling and soothing baby wipes, only 95 cents. Skin-friendly, super-absorbent newborn nappies from 1 euro 39. And baby dry nappies designed for...